What's the connection between the DVLA and our Viello bicycle brand? I'll come back to that in a moment. Hello, my name's Ian Hughes and I'm the founder of indie boutique bicycle brand Viello and welcome to episode two of our Viello vlog. This is a series of videos that's going to take you right behind the scenes of how we created our Viello bike brand from concept all the way through to reality. Throughout the series, I want to provide you with an open and honest dialogue and also ask you to join in with your questions and comments by posting them down below here. In this episode, I'd like to share with you where it all started. What was the vision and the inspiration to create our own bicycle brand? Who were the core team of people that helped turn this concept into a reality? What was the process to turn these ideas from conception all the way through to its first embryonic state? So, where did it all start? What was the vision? What was the idea? Why did we do it? Well, it was quite a leap of faith, I have to say, from moving from the business and industry that I knew uh, into something completely new in a new territory, but I love a challenge. And I think the first point to understand is the main bicycle industry is working on a yearly churn. So most of the big bike brands have got tons and tons of different models that they've got to create in a model year, which they then have to showcase and deliver on time, uh, normally showcased to somewhere like Eurobike. And it just means that a lot of the engineers and the product managers have got to meet a certain deadline and it gets to that deadline point where there's a lot of stuff that's kind of unfinished or maybe could have done a little bit better, maybe a bit more attention to detail. And that was a key point for me when we're creating our own brand that I didn't want to get hooked up in this yearly model churn. I wanted to make sure with our team of people that we were laser focused on that attention to detail. We got that absolutely right, first of all in every point of the bike, in every point that we were involved before we launched it. So we weren't involved in that model year churn. I certainly didn't want to come to the market with our own brand that was a copy and paste uh, style of business. Um, it certainly wasn't going to be a marketing led company that supplied bikes to customers. It was going to be real. It was going to be honest. We didn't just want to put a one by group set on a regular road bike frame. We really wanted to engineer the whole road bike frame all around one by. So following through those ideas, we wanted to think a little bit outside of the box and think of some new stuff that others haven't thought of. Then I think it was important to understand who our customers are, where they ride, thinking of UK riding conditions, especially where we are up in the Northeast around Northumberland, where road surfaces are broken, you're riding in wet, you're riding in wind, and, and all those conditions, but also thinking of those real world riding conditions and how could we adapt a bike and provide a bike that was going to be suitable for those riding conditions. So those are the first ideas of thinking of our customers, being brave, looking forward, thinking ahead. And then of course, what I wanted to do was tap into my industry knowledge of looking forward to what component manufacturers are doing further ahead. We we're always involved with getting ideas from component manufacturers, what they were going to bring to the market. So that was quite useful to see if that could tie in with how it fitted in with our, with our bicycle brand. Um, and not only that, but also if we needed to manufacture or provide some components to bring the whole thing all together. So there's a ton of ideas which we thought of, uh, the inspiration and the first thought process which is then gonna go through to the next stage, which we'll come on to in a bit. So who were the core team of people that helped us turn this concept into reality? Well, I guess we've got to start with Trevor, my son, first of all. Uh, Trevor's been involved with the bicycle trade for a number of years. Um, whilst I was running Scott, he came to help me at various events, road shows, uh, race events. Then went on to university, got a BA honors degree uh, in business for the financial attachment, and then came to join me in 2011 when we were distributing our high-end road bikes. The working relationship that we have in business is a really good one in that it's very much what I would describe as kind of old school, new school. I've got the knowledge and industry background. Trevor's new school certainly knows his way around a spreadsheet and brings new ideas into the business with, uh, with those areas. Another important person to the team was our engineer Jens, Jens Buda. And I'm just gonna work off script here because I need to explain precisely 
what Jens does at the university where he works, because if I don't get this right, he's, he's, I'm going to get so wrong off this, so bear with me. So Jens works at the Chemnitz University of Technology in East Germany as a scientific researcher and lecturer. And we at the LO are also an industrial professorship partner of the sports and machine engineering at that university. That's the technical bit. So Jens's experience goes way, way back uh, where he was producing carbon composite surfboards. He's been involved with carbon composite and composite bicycle frames. And his degree of knowledge of scientific engineering is unbelievable. I get completely lost when he starts deep diving into the science behind it, but a really, really great guy. We're very much on the same page in terms of attention to detail. There's also a bit of a Jason Stratum lookalike as well. So another important member of our team was a lad I knew from many, many years ago. Uh, we kind of go back to nightclubbing days in Newcastle when I was DJing here in Newcastle. Such a great creative guy. When we were first thinking about our own brand, I really wanted to run the idea past Antonio. And he came up with some great ideas and some thoughts, very much on the same page, clean lines, understated, no branding all over the bike, just subtle branding, subtle colors, and being very creative the way we discuss our brand as well, how we present it, how we talk about it, the language we talk about our brand. Since then, Antonio has created his own advertising and marketing agency with Claire, his business partner, called The Traveler and the Bear. And I have to admit, I think they're probably one of the most creative design agencies anywhere in the UK, if not within the world. Great bunch of people. Next up to progress those ideas from the visuals to our website was to involve Antonio's brother, Dan, Dan Bikini. Dan helped us create our website. A copy and paste wasn't gonna be an option, that's for sure. We wanted to be as forward thinking of how our website looked as we were with not only the bikes, but also the brand, the brand language. So Antonio was designing how the page layout would work and then transferring that to Dan to see how it all sits in the wireframe and the background behind a very complex website. Since then, we brought another couple of members onto the team. Uh, we've got Lucas, who's our chief mechanic, who I can trust completely with building our bikes to the spec and to the detail that's required. And we've also got Adam, who looks after administration and logistics for us as well. So through the process of developing the brand, we came up with some ideas which we wanted to spread out onto a mood board, which would give us some inspiration um, and some key areas to focus on. And a number of those key areas were really that we wanted to engineer our frames and parts with real engineering purpose. No gimmicks, no buzzwords, no trick parts on the bike, which was just a load of marketing BS, basically. It really needed to be honest, truthful engineering, a clean design that was really subtle, uncomplicated, really, really beautiful to look at. Plus we wanted to have some fun as well. So it needed to be honest and have some real soul. Another important part of when we were developing our brand was to set out right from the start what our brand stood for. One way that many, many companies set out their brand and their brand values is with a mission statement. And for us, I thought, nah, that's not what it is. That's kind of old school. We need to think a little bit further forward and come up with some key words that our brand represents. So there are a number of key words which we came up with. And the first one was freedom. We've got complete and utter freedom. We're not bound by corporate brands, politics or bureaucracy. We can make decisions between a small team of people very, very quickly. We can be pretty agile and we've got that total freedom. And rules, there are no rules. That's the rule. We have no rules. We can make decisions what we want, when we want, and how we want to at any time. We want to be brave. So those key words, yes, for sure. We want to be forward thinking. We want to be indie boutique. We want to be open, honest, no gimmicks. We want to be premium, not a price-driven business, not a price-driven brand. And we want to be customer-centric. Really important to connect with our customers and explain to our customers, you, what our brand is all about. And I think in this stage of my life as well, is really to have some fun. So after we've formed all those ideas together, obviously the most important thing, or a very, very important thing, is to think about what's our first bike? What's our first album? It's gotta be a good one. It's gotta be something a bit special. 
So again, going back to thinking of our customers, UK customers riding in UK riding conditions, who were our target customers? British riders riding in UK riding conditions, but maybe extending that even further. And we saw that our customers were probably discerning customers. They own a number of premium high-end road bikes, maybe mountain bike also. So during our concept ideas around 2016, the gravel market was growing quite strongly in the US. And we didn't want to jump on the bandwagon of positioning or calling our bike a gravel bike. If we had to place it into a sector, it was probably more around road plus. So what is the connection between the DVLA and our brand, the Yellow? Well, full disclosure, I'm a bit of a petrol head and it probably all started back when I was about seven or eight years old. My dad brought me Autosport car magazine into the house. I started reading that and I got totally ensconced with everything to do with cars, motorsport, etc. And over the last 38 years of my time in the bicycle industry, I've met and formed friendships with many people in the motorsport world from team owners to trainers to drivers from the world of Formula One and WRC. I could do a complete series on that, but I'll keep everything on piste and get back to that connection. So a number of years ago, the DVLA released registration numbers, car registration plates open to the public that wanted to select a personal registration number for their car that either tied up with their name or with something else. So I wasn't so inspired by finding car registration number with, around my own name, but more that either connected with the car I was driving at the time or the business I was running. So it got to about 2011 when we were distributing our own range of high-end bicycle brands. I was looking for a registration number from the DVLA that tied in with the business that we, which we were running at the time. And I found one. So let's fast forward to 2016 where we were brainstorming with our team about our bike brand. We went through all the details, all the ideas, all the, everything together, but there was one point that was just missing. No matter how hard we tried and no matter how many brain dumps we had, it, it just wasn't working. And that was the name of the brand. We were looking for something that was maybe four or five letters long, that wasn't gonna be emblazoned on the down tube. It's gonna be quite subtle. One morning I was walking past my car about to drive into work and I looked at the registration number on my car and I thought, that's it. That's, that's our brand name. So before I got too excited, I went into the office and said, look guys, I've got this idea. Let's just double check that this name isn't registered around the world for anybody, that it's open and free before we even start thinking about it. And sure enough, um, the name wasn't registered anywhere. And the car registration number was V1ELO. And that's where we created our name, VLO. We turned the one into an I, and VLO was where our name all began. And that's the connection between the DVLA and our brand name. In the next episode, I'd like to take you right the way through all the challenges we faced as a new startup and how we grew those embryonic ideas into our first bike. And my promise to you is to answer all of your questions in an open and honest way. I always say to cycling fans, there's no such thing as a daft question. So if you've got any questions at all, any comments about this video, any questions you'd like to ask about the bicycle industry or what goes on behind the scenes, please don't be frightened of asking and leaving your comments below. And final request, because it means a lot to me and the team here, is to make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one.